So now that we're done with vector magnitude, we need one more trick up our sleeve in order to bounce the ship off at an arbitrary angle, off an arbitrarily angled wall, and that is vector projection. And we already, we're, we're kind of almost there. We did the dot products to get the cosine of the angle, and we said if the cosine is less than zero, then we're in the bad zone, but if it's greater than zero, we're in the good zone. But now, in, in that case, we're only interested in the sine, but to do vector projection, we're interested in actually the actual value of the cosine. Right? We're, we're not just interested in the sine, we need the cosine of the value. And it turns out that cosine elegantly solves this problem of vector projection. Now, what is vector projection? If I have a vector, and I have another vector, I'm just going to draw this vector uh, along the x-axis, if you would, but it could be any any orientation, and we'll see that in a minute. If I took a light bulb, a really bright light bulb, and I went up into the sky really high, and I shined rays down, so the rays are coming pretty much straight down at this vector. Okay, they're all the same length. I'm just not drawing them very well. But say these rays were coming down. What kind of shadow would I see of this red vector onto the blue vector? All right, if I followed this down the direction that the rays are going, the shadow would end up right here. Okay, so the projection of the red vector onto the blue vector is this vector right here. It's a, another way of thinking of the projection is saying, well, what piece of this vector is going in the direction of this vector? It's called vector projection. We're projecting like a, like a light bulb maybe, light bulb, big bright light bulb so that these lines are perfectly parallel coming straight down. We're projecting this vector down onto this vector. That's vector projection. And we need to do that with dot products and cosines. So let me let me clear all this off again. I'm gonna draw our two vectors again but thicken up the pen a little bit. So here we go. Here's the one vector and then here is the second vector. And again they don't have this second vector doesn't have to be perfectly on the X. It could be pointed down and so on and so forth. We'll examine cases like that shortly. But there there are our two vectors. And I'm just gonna in black and real thin here, I'm going to draw a triangle. Let's see if I can get a triangle right there. And this is where the trigonometry will come in handy again if you're comfortable with your sines and cosines is pretty much what we need in this case but there's our triangle we used that before with the Pythagorean theorem to get the length of this vector but I want to do the projection of this vector onto that vector well review Khan Academy if you need but let me just go through some concepts here that hopefully are old hat so so ka uh, and then there's Toa, but Toa is tangent, and we don't really need tangent for this. We need sine, cosine. In fact, what we actually need is the, the cosine, but I'll leave sine up here just, just so we can get started. Here's sine, the sine of the angle theta. Here's theta. That's our angle. That's our sweep distance. The sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. All right, this is our opposite side. There's our triangle again. How do I know this is the opposite side? Well, it's opposite of this angle right here. So opposite or our hypotenuse is right here. So opposite over hypotenuse. This over this will give us the sine of the angle. Then cosine is the adjacent side. The adjacent side over the hypotenuse. All right. Well, to get the projection of this red vector on this blue vector, I'm only worried about the adjacent side. I'm not worried about the opposite side. So to simplify this video, later on we'll deal with sines, but I'm just going to get rid of the sines and focus on the cosine here. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now remember, our goal is to get the projection of this red vector onto the blue vector, and that projection... Uh, let me do that in green here. The projection would be like so. It's, you can think of it as red shadow onto 
blues territory, so to say. That, that would be the projection. So I need the length of this side. I need the length of the adjacent side. I can get the cosine by doing a dot product. Okay, the cosine's mixed in there with the magnitudes, but I'll show you how to pull that out in a sec. I can get the cosine with the dot products. I can get the hypotenuse by taking the magnitude or the length of this vector. So I know, I know this, and I know this, and I'm trying to find this, the adjacent side. Well, at that point, it's just a matter of doing some math, and hopefully the math looks pretty straightforward. We need to multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. If I multiply this side by the hypotenuse and this side by the hypotenuse, that cancels this out, leaving us with the adjacent. So the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle between the two will give me the length of the adjacent side, which is what I don't know. I'm trying to find that out. I know the... I know, sorry, I know these two things over here, and by combining them or multiplying them together, I can get the length of the adjacent side, which is what I'm looking for. All right, let me clear out the, I think we're done with all of this right here. We just want the length of that adjacent side, and that's the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, getting the length of the hypotenuse is simple. That's just that magnitude function we wrote in the last video. Getting the cosine is a little bit different. Let me write the equation down for dot products again. A dot B, which we've seen how to do that now, is equal to the magnitude of A. That's an A, by the way. Let me raise the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. So I see a cosine here, but we, we also have these magnitudes mixed in. So we just can't do a dot product and think, oh, we have the cosine of the angle. No, we don't. We don't. We, we have the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta. But what, what if we did something tricky? <laughs> what if we said, you know, magnitude of A, what if, what if we turned A into a length of 1? and we turned b into a length of 1. So then that would be 1 times 1 times cosine theta. Well, 1 times 1 times cosine theta is just cosine theta. So if we can turn a and b into lengths of 1, then we can actually get the actual cosine value uh, of the angle between these two vectors. Okay, and that's that's what we're going to do in the next video. It's called normalizing our vectors. We're going to make them length of one, and we'll explore that in the next video.